Here's the dad, how you eat plaster the wall? Prepare the wall first to control the suction, coat it with PVA. Let that set up, and then you start plastering it. How long, how long would wall, that take to settle? It depends on the temperature in the house, wherever you are, it can take three, four hours, it could take overnight. I prefer myself PV it the night before, good thick coat, and then plaster it the next day. Doing it the same day, you can risk it sliding. So, what you would do, any cracks in the wall, you pop a bit of scrim across it, any misses when you've been PVN, if you see it dry, you see a dry patch, pop a bit of scrim across it, stops it drying out, cracking out and falling off. So then, get your plaster and everything ready to go, and then it's a matter of mixing up. So you've got to work out, a bag of plaster roughly does about 10 metres square, a millimetre each, got a couple of mil thick. At first, you'll not get it on as thin, you'll not get it on as thin as that, you'll be a bit heavier at first, and then you'll get used to spreading it as you get more experience. A bag at first will probably do you between 7 and 8 metres, then once you get used to spreading it, you'll get a bit more wet. So then we'll mix up. Take a line along as high as you can and then plaster up to it, then you go up and bring the top down to meet it. So, any scrims on, cover them first, put the scrims up. That's it. I'm just taking a line across the room. And a wee bit for the edge, for yourselves. Then we're ready to pull up the wall. You've got to do it yourselves. I start to use close to the wall, not so much in the middle, so you're not putting too much when you're going to the edge and risking spewing it around the corner. So basically, when you're doing it, you're starting to do it here, up, back down, and then you would be very little from the edge out to meet it. But it's been having to be in it. I'd normally start with that. Tight to the edge. Just make sure you keep it nice and flat falling up as you're going down. Thank you. 
This is the worst bit for myself than my dodgy hip and knees at the very bottom. You just got to make sure you get the pressure right at the bottom as well. Now all you're doing is falling in the middle. So you need a decent amount on that time. You just, yeah. Yeah. Back down and just from that bottom right up. Round and off. Yeah. Back down. Try and put stuff in there. Basically, when you're cutting, you don't want to be going the hardly anything and hearing it scratching. Like that, you're just putting no enough on. You've got to make sure you've got plenty on your trail each time. So you're getting a, a decent thickness on the wall. What do you reckon that thickness is? About 2 mil? A bit between a mil and 2 mil, roughly. It, depending on the shape of your wall, differs how thick you have to be on because if the wall's bumpy you've got to build up quite a bit so you'll be making it a good three mil. This first goes just to block out all the holes, cover them up, get the wall, get this bit flat ready, then the second coat you put on covers up and fills up all the holes. So basically just coming out to meet it now. Just starting up there. So if I was doing this wall I would only do it from side to side. But a bigger wall, can we be coming out and off like that and meeting it for that side? Well, that size we need to go up and down. But just for yourselves for practice. Crap. Someone bumped that wall. Names, Richard. <laughs> and the angle of that trowel is quite flat, isn't it? You've got to try and keep the trowel as flat as possible. If you, if you open the trowel up, you just scrape the plaster off again. Because you've got to try and keep it as flat as possible. Which is quite common, you know what I mean? Especially when you first start, you have a, tend to have a trowel too open and you're pulling more of it off than you're actually putting on. That, then, to, then now all I've got to do is bring the top down to meet it. Now I'm going to reach up for that. Stay. Find something that fits in. Sometimes your gauge is the right size. Okay, gauge is always the right size. So use that. To I could that. use that. See if I'm going to go and get another trailer then. Yeah. That's what it's about. Just because I should. Just bring it right off you. Man up there, and then you just have to come tight to the socket as well. Just a bit on there. That flexi trail had to be flexi trail. That's perfect size. It's up here, I'll go there. See on the back wall? There we go, one of the dead there. Put it right in. Perfect size. And then just leave that, put that take up. Top down to me. So this is where you've got to watch and not have your trail too angled when you're coming down. You want it too angled out because all you're doing is ripping the stuff back down to the top.
you wouldn't want to go up and try and finish off with that because there's not enough to finish all away. So make sure you've always got enough just to finish that area off. While you're up and doing that and doing all the time, that's wasting time for yourself as well. Stuff's thickening up and setting on you. What you want to try and avoid is having stuff in the middle like that and then you put it to it and you get it on the sea line you want to get the trigger right tight into the angle pull it down and round so you're not putting anything really on the sea line That would be your first coat of dip. What we do, clean the trowel, clean the back end of the trowel. Then you need to wash your hand down, just clean the back end of your trowel, and then you're putting a second coat over it. And this time, all you're doing, you're just filling up, making sure there's another thin coat over it, so you're filling up lights of the holes and that on it. Then you need to worry about them with your first coat. Just got to make sure you got rid of them all in your second coat. So basically, that's it. You're not want to have. I try not to have any trail marks between there and as high up as I can reach. So I'm going to bring that right down and off down here. So just for quickness. Now, then you need to bring this bit out too far, you're just coming out. So you're out past the level of the socket when you're bringing that cell down. So you're not going to hit it. Just pop a wee sponge. Just bringing this top down there. So you see, I've already put a coat up the way. So I hardly need anything to come down and meet it. So I'm there, so we bit, bring it down, lift it off, right down, round and off. See there's a couple of wee holes there, see them? Mm -hmm. So you would do, fall them across the way, bring your trail back up over it, straight down, round and off. And then same again, next time you're just working your way along. See how far that hot fair and a half went, you know, it's done half the top, the hard line is stuck. It's not a heavy coat back over it, all you're doing is making sure there's no holes on it. So do you reckon your second coat's less than the first? It's just a bit less. You're, if you put your first coat on, say it's 2 to 3 mil, mm. your second coat's only 1 to 2 mil, just making sure you're putting a coat over it. Mm -hmm. So when you're trolling it flat, you've got something to move. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you do it in one coat, you've nothing really to move. If the stuff sets on you, mm -hmm. you've got nothing that you can fill up with. Mm -hmm. So you always give, it, always give it two coats. That's this area done down to here at the moment. So all I've got to do is finish that top half off.
some just on the back end of your trail. Bring it almost to the wall. You know what you're doing. That will more or less be enough to fill the whole top in. Don't do that. This bit here, all you have to do is bring it down to there because when you bring that trail out for the wall, you cover that bit in there. You're coming down. Scraping it on, oh, trying not to just scrape it in a line, scrape it along, and then you can actually lift it easier from the edge. So you're getting it across the full face of the towel instead of a lump in the middle. And that's if I need to do high so I can just get down and get rid of the steps and finish off finish off the bottom half. In the winter, when you're on a job in the winter, it could be a cold house, it could take anything up to about three hours, three and a half hours for the set. In the summer, you could be in an attic, sun's out, it's scorching, it could take an hour and a half. You've just got to work to the pace at the temperatures in the room. So. Quite. All you do now, before you would throw it flat, clean the pail out spotless. Wash your tools down and that. I'm not worried about all the lines on that. The lines come out as it sets. You just try to get rid of the lines as you're going along. You can't get rid of them. That's what we do. You just back it stuff on, and that's a wee bag for rubbish. So once the wall's coated, all you're doing now is let, clean the pail out, let the stuff take up slightly, you don't want to leave it too long. Technically when you're putting it on, you get 20 minutes each coat. Then after 55 minutes to the hour you want to trail it flat, make sure it's 
flattened in, or you're making sure you're getting rid of all the hollows. You might still leave a few light lines, but as it firms up, the lines come out. So you don't need to worry about the lines as you're going. So if you're always going to dig it in slightly when it's at this stage, so you just got to now basically everything's getting cleaned out, and then we'll give it 10 minutes, and then drill it flat, just depending on how quick you get it on. But you want to make sure it's under control all the time. So if the stuff's firming up on you, clean the pail out quick as you can, drill it flat, and then it's under control. Then it just go away, have a piece come back and stuff's hard and you can't get it moving. You better get it flattened in and then it's ready. You can go and have a wee 10-15 minutes at least. Okay, so right guys, what we'll do is we'll get a couple, somebody get the kettle on. Mm. You guys just do Ralph a favour and clean your stuff for you. And yeah. I'll film that. I'll get the kettle on, who's clean? On the video there, you have to wait 55 minutes or so. No, no, no. Uh, we have, we're no way, and we're just going right in. Is that because we're I'm just going to be right in or not? I'm just going to try this flat right away. If you want a job, would you, would you ideally wait? No, you've got the water. Just, water. Just, oh, yeah, right, right. I just did. So, so what, did you, what did you mean about the 55 minutes? That's your maximum time you've got maximum really time. to get it right. flattened in. Right. right, I've got a maximum of 55 minutes to get it. So after that, you just won't get to move. You'll not get to move. So you've got to be quick enough to get it done. So, yeah. Alright, so that's it for the Just ditch that. 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 To what you're doing, you're putting a bit of finish on your uh -huh. hawk, leave it to the side, and if you need to fill any holes up, you use it with that. You don't use glut, especially once you're polish, trilling it, polishing it, you don't use a glut. Why is that? Because with glut, what happens is when they paint it, at the end of the day, it can soften up and leave the hollow. So you want to have it all trilled flat, best you can, and filled with plaster. And not once you're polishing, having it filled with glut. Mm. Right, now we're going to trim it all flat. Now I use a Mediflex for that bit. What I do is I have it slightly bigger than my normal trowel, so I'm not going over the same lines. Whereas if I was using my trowel again, I'd be coming down the same lines all the time. This time I'm going to go past them a bit further, then I can go back to a first polish with a normal trowel, same polish with that, and if it needs a fur polish, use the flexi one, then just get a flat rub, and that should take everything. And the Medi trowel, that's a softer metal, so it's a bit It's bendy. a softer metal, so it's a wee bit flexible, and it flattens the wall in. So all, of, all you're doing now, starting your top left, what you're doing to the top, the bottom right. Someone left-handed would do it the opposite, would need left-handed would start up, the right and what doing to the bottom left. All you're doing is basically trowel, taking your trowel line out the wall as you're going. So, good time just to scrape the plaster off the ceiling. So the stuff's still soft and you can fill up anything as you're going. So same that stuff on the wall, you're just taking it in. Fucking steps. Put the fingers in the water. I'll edit that. Oh, and I'll leave it in, it's better. Then you use crappy steps. <laughs> so on oh, there, get that stuff off here. Is it at this uh -huh. Is it at this point that we should be taking the edges in all the time, yeah, after your first two coats? 
once it starts to set, then you start cleaning your edges. Along Just get them clean, and then that's them. You've not got nothing, nothing left on your ceiling. You can't bring any lumps down. Because right. if I went through here, pushed that in, dragged it down, I could have a drag bit. It would leave a line. Right. So get the stuff off. You could actually. You didn't. It's still too soft to put any water on it. So what you want to avoid the now is having it your trail too open. If I open this out, I'm dragging loads of stuff off. And you, you've got to watch, if you have it too open, you can make like tiger stripes on the wall, which you're not wanting. To do that, you've just got to keep it a bit flatter and you're going to get them. So you stand at this edge here, bringing it out. What kind of pressure are we talking here? Medium? A bit medium pressure. You just put it so you're getting it to move. You're, if I go too loose with it like that, no pressure, you're going to get it flat and you're leaving that all the time. So just a bit firmer and it gets just the T marks away. So I'm just bringing this. So basically, what I'm going to do now is bring that trowel. You can take it up first, lift it off, a wee hollow there, pop some stuff in it, nice and flat for the top. Then round and off, back up on that line, take it off, tighten at the top, and round and off. And you're just making sure that round's filled up. See there's wee hollows up the top corner there? Mm -hmm. You got that stuff there, you just got to make sure. You fill up the wee bits in as you're going, just there's none, no holes left. So basically what you would do, once that's done, down, round and off, before you go to give it polish the next thing, you just brush your angles. There's no stuff to wipe off the ceilings or the, the corner. You should fill up any wee holes you've left. You're still not going to get rid of all these lines because the wall's still, it's still soft. So you're not going to fill it for an up 100%. You're probably half in the size of the lines now. Then you can just bring it up, there's a hole there, so you just put stuff in across the way. Then for the top, round and off, and then you jump over and do the other side. Now it's up to you. That wee bit at the light socket, you can fill it as you're going, or you could leave it to last thing. It doesn't make any odds. And you, I could flatten that in now, or I can do everything and then come back to if there's a wall socket or a socket under there. It's maybe when you go to folks uses to do it, you tend to get the sockets are still on, so you've got to loosen them off and just be careful not to spill any plaster on them, or you'll end up tripping the hole. Or ah, exactly, and then just make sure. Because you might have a skirting on, so you might only have about an inch and a half gap for the skirting to the bottom of the socket. So you just have to find a scraper or something. It'll fit in that groove and you just keep it flat as you can. And you, you don't need a lot on that. All you have to do is make sure it's coloured the same as the wall. But make, always make sure when you're doing the bits, you go in far enough. Because some folks stop, see that's your socket there. If, if that covers off it, they just plaster it about here. You always try to plaster so you just sort of, if that's on the wall, the socket was actually in the wall, you sort of plaster about one, two mil inside it. Just past. Just past the level of it so you make sure when they fit that socket, the, the cover plate back to it, it's all filled right round it. Because there's nothing worse if you've left it short, then you've got to go back and fill up later on. Because you do get, you can do that quite a bit, especially. If you're an apprentice, my lady does it a lot. She gets a bit them bits. I'm just taking it. I just lift it off that side so you can you just leave it. It's too soft to fill up perfect to now it's still, so you're just making sure, as I say, you're making sure all the holes are filled up. I'm 
basically wash that first before I would jump up normally. This stupid thing didn't fall for this time. See that hole up there, bit of stuff in it, nice and tight, right down, round and off. And as you get closer to the wall, you can't turn the trail off, you just got to gently glide it off. If you do it firm and then it slow down, you shudder it at the end, which isn't what you, you do what shudders in the wall, you just got to bring it off. So this area here, all you can do is bring it down below that. Just bring it flat down below that because the reason being that wall will come out for there. See, see there, there's like wee stripes here. The trail was just too much on angle, so I have to just flatten it off. And it gets rid of them. I drag any dry stuff onto the wall so you're no matter, as I said, no in any line. This here you just got to make sure it's in nice and tight. Always fill it up the opposite way than you're cutting. So my trail's coming this way, fill it up, hollows up that way, you pull your trail across it, and if you're going up and down the way, you take your Trail that across in there and bring it up. And never try to go like that and fill it in because all you're doing is making a hole. Going in like that, you're just making holes for yourself. So this time, you know, I've come up far because I've brought that. So I'm right down, so I'm needing to come up and just meet what I've done already. So I'm coming up to this height here, bring it off, back down, we've got stuff in there. Now we've got stuff on the hog still, so if you've got a wee hollow like that at the bottom, you're just taking a bit off of this. These bits tend to be the joints between the trail. You tend to leave wee bits like that, so you've just got to try and get that trail firm to fill up. The longer I leave that, this stuff's firming up and it wouldn't fill much up. So you basically just want to get your two coats on, trail it flat right away, and it's under control. Clean your pillow obviously first, then trail it flat. So under control, you can have a couple of because you get basically 20 minutes before you need to put any water on it after that. So we'll get this trail flat, you're basically about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then it's a touch of water on it, first polish, give it another 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, get another polish, and then if it's good enough, a flat rub, 
if it's not, you get another one polish and then a wee flat rub at the end. Just to, I'll show you when we're going over it with a trowel it up. So we've got wee holes here. The firmer you keep that trowel at the bottom here, you don't let it dig out, curve out at the bottom. Because like, if you have a wee look there, just left up at the bottom corner to so show you. Right, it's a bit down at the bottom there. At the end of the day, if I'd polished up and left that on, the, wind, the joiner wouldn't get skirt and flat along the wall. So you do at the end, just nick that stuff off. Normally just go along taking the bottom half inch off, just to make sure. And you don't, you never plaster directly right to the floor, unless it's, unless you know you're in a room, it's to get done straight down, because nine times out of 10, skirting goes on and covers the bottom three or four inches. So you just got to make sure you're an inch, two inches off, an inch and a half off the ground, something like that, nice and smooth above that. And as you can keep the bit underneath it, you just need to keep that flat. So the so the joiner scut scutting off flat, flat along the way. Now it's going to be soft, so your brush will dig in a little bit, so be as gentle as you can. You're just washing this wall clean. And then on that side, and you would go up on the ceiling wall angle as well, and then you're leaving it because you'll get rid of the brush marks, and now the edge is nice and clean. Now you've got you would do, clean your tools down and then leave it 20 minutes, half an hour to get the first polish. See you then. Oh, just to show you. Top so top. just to test, test the wall to see how set, how it's taken up, take your fingers across it and if you're getting a lot on your fingers, it's still too soft. If not, if it's firmed up and you're not getting a lot on your fingers, then it's time to just get another flattening. It's still too soft to polish with water you would just get a trowel flat again, another trowel flat and leave it. So this time you can trowel it across the way if you wish, if you can reach both sides. So basically you're just going to be coming from this side, halfway and off, and coming back, and just overlap them, just bring it that way, and then 
get another 10 minutes and then get a first polish. And that's it. So basically stir them again, bring the top down a wee bit and then just work your way across and just work your way all the way down to the ground. Leave it another 10 minutes or so and then it'll be time for a polish. Bingo. So this this will also this would also get rid of your brush marks. Nice, okay. Just now. So your wee brush marks. And if you found something was setting on yourself, I'll oh, wait till I get it. It's not going on yet, has it? No, I can't stop rolling. Is it still rolling? So what? No, I say, mate, I say. So what you do now, right? You would have to decide. But I'm trying this flat now. If the oh, stuff was, set, was setting on yourself, you didn't put any sugar. If so the stuff was setting on yourself, you just use a bit of water to get rid of it. If it's no, if it's like this, it's still too soft. You just chill it flat. So when I'm doing this this time, this will get rid of your brush marks at the edges. Basically, I'm just going to be bringing that out, just a fraction. Yeah, wait until he's recording. I think it's on. It's on it. Well, that's it. That's I bet if I was on a job, I would be doing that wall and that wall at the same time. So it would take it would be setting quicker. So if I was doing eight all two walls at once, that pail through would have done a first coat on both the walls. Mm -hmm. and then I'd have washed the pail down and remixed, mm -hmm. and second coated them all, cleaned the pail out, trailed it flat right away, and then give myself 15 20 minutes and first polish, and the other time I set and polish. So it's just basically all on the pace, how fast you get the stuff on, to how much time you can sit about. With that being a small wall, you're waiting more times, more than anything else, you're standing about waiting. But if that was, that was a wall the length of that corridor, say that was a full wall the length of the corridor, the time I've got that first coated, and maybe only be three quarters of the way along with the first big pail. Mix another one up and finish off, finish off the first coat, then back to the start and start setting coin it coming along. And depending on if you've got enough stuff or not, you would maybe have to just mix a wee bit. You maybe do the first third of it, and if you've not got enough to finish it off, wash it down, we mix up, mere stuff, and finish coating the whole wall and then your back start trailing it flat right away. You wouldn't get a wall that size, you wouldn't get any any breaks on it unless you use the extra time. If you use the extra time you get another hour to work with it. Really, nice. That's what you would do at first, you'd do a bit, get a bit extra time. Put a plate of mass on an extra hour? About an hour, a big tablespoon should get about an hour on the back. Before it sets? Before it sets. So you recommend if we were doing like a much bigger area, even two hours, we'd be better putting that in. Get well, the not two years, you, you should be able to do half a wall each. Well, no, you should do that on jobs then, I, if, if, not really. Nah, I'm, nine times out of ten, if I'm doing a big area, I get another two or three guys in to help me. So if I've got a big massive ceiling today, I mean I've had nine plasterers on a ceiling. Right, Jesus. How big is the ceiling? Oh, wow. it was massive, like, mm -hmm. I never, I never, I had something like 60 odd battens and youngman boards on it, and we were short about three metres by, three metres by four metres short. The ladder, so the boys just done the last bit and off the ladders. all by hand? You did all, that? all by hand? Like, they are trouble, you're putting all that on? You're putting all that on hand, aye. How but all we done was we just picked an area each. Like, the boys had a big black... Can like your big black bucket? Can the big aye, black aye, rubbish bucket? We had that filled <laughs> first. Yeah, right, we had really? that filled right up at first. And then, three or, just, three or four hours just started yeah, putting that. Then we mix up. Aye, no, see the big pail, it's cleaning pail. We mix a couple of them up. And then the next two would start the next area, then that. Then the first two boys would drop back and start setting coat in the first bit. Wow. You have all go to work inside, basically. Yeah, you have all go to work inside. Yeah. 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 Didn't you see any joints from that? A, see if it's a wall and there's a couple of years on it, do you stagger it, one at the left hand side and one in the middle, or do you just work for the end well, again? Ideally, Ideally, if you're doing a big wall, each one's left-handed, one's right-handed, you work yeah. towards each other. Aye, yeah. but, but you and they all if you're both, both, if you're both, both right-handed, one starts halfway and the other. Aye, that's what I mean. Just yeah, staggering. One starts at left-hand side, one starts half in the middle. Aye, ah, ah, that's it. That's See, right. initially, just start with that. We took on a big, a big job. It was a big, massive ceiling that we thought. 
We'll can struggle with that together. Can you sleep all in the middle? Can you put a joint? Uh, just you put a joint. The you know, what what that Ralph Flair has done was he put a joint along the middle of the ceiling and, and the middle of the wall. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you've done and half the ceiling and half the wall. Half the half the wall. Can I ask you something? Sealed it off and then done the other half. Right. Right. Half. Is that just for your corners so they're near? Well, right. so, well so you're not working to a soft, soft corners. Aye. Aye, so you didn't want to bump in there. You're better with a firm corner to work to. You get the angle trail, you can use an angle trail at the corners. But my own preference is I would do everything facing this way one mix, then everything facing that way the next mix, so you're not done. So if you've done that and that and you've got a window with beads, you've just got to decide. See the biggest area, you would do the soffit with it. And then because nine times out of ten you're not plastering the sill. So you just do the wee soffit with the, the bigger area. And the two angles would get done when you're doing the smaller areas. What if you were starting the ceiling? Would you just do a ceiling on a wall and deal with that? And then no, I would do the ceiling, the outside wall, and this wall here. Everything facing time. that way at the same time. And then the next one, I'd do the two bigger ones. That that, just the way you were talking about like what's the difference from starting that to that to that to that? It's just because both angles would be wet. It's, it's a bigger angle. angle. Yeah. You want to do your rear angle. So I would do the rear weight, the rear area right, when I'm touching my trail style because I don't like using the angle trail so I just do it freehand get my trail tight to the edge and tight to that edge your knuckles still hit occasionally well, obviously but that takes a lot of skill doesn't it? Uh, I mean, if you've got you bad to areas you less chance of messing it up so you better just do the ceiling first let it set and then do it then, then then right. so and basically if it's you get better you maybe want to start playing around right. with wet so what you, see yeah. what you could do right you see there was a paint box in the corner right. paint yeah. box in the corner you've got your window angles you could do your ceiling with one side of that and maybe the, a side of the window. Then your next mix, you could do that wall there with this wall maybe and do one other side of the pipe box. And you just want to make sure you've done it so you've got you've never got two soft angles touching. Right. Like you would do this wall here with maybe that bit coming out on that wall, so on the pipe box. If you're doing that wall, then when you're doing that wall, you're working to that hard angle and you did a wee bit coming out this way. Right. So you just got to judge how much you can get done in your cell. So I, I so don't know. Is that it um, all flattened off now? It's all flattened off oh. the second time. I've just got to get a polish in 10, 10. I've just got to get five, 10 minutes and get a yeah. polish, your first polish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, guys. Go So you just check, just take it, feel how rough it is in now, right? Very rough. Just check it out. Then once you get the first polish, it's rough. But you feel the difference between that. So then, once that takes up, the next thing is you don't know how smooth your boy is because you're wearing gloves. No, I take off on the pillow. You know what I mean? So, it's only mood. So, about 10 minutes and then we're going to come back to it. Yeah? 10 minutes. 5 minutes, we get our first polish and then get our 10 minutes, get another one. So, now it's time to get the wall a first polish. So, start at top left and you're working down to the bottom right. Chasing your water line down the wall as you're going all the time. Right. Right. So this time your trowel's a bit more on angle to pull it. And you're pulling a bit more pressure on it this time. Just to do it. Gently brush behind there, and now you can flatten that in later. Now we're coming up. Just get the water out your top. Don't need too much water on it to get it moving. Down, down, and off. Chase it back up the way. Nice and firm, down, down, and off. And then you're just chasing that water line along the wall. So 
when you're polishing at the right stage, you're going to get a lot of water on your trill. If you're too early, early you'll have loads on it. It's just too soft to start polishing it. You should only be getting about that much on it. Then you just be giving it another five, ten minutes and get another polish. And that should more or less do it. Or a trill flat. Just have to see how smooth it is and how you finish it then. And basically what you don't want to do is fill up any hollows with the glut. You would use your plaster. At this stage, if you see you dug your trowel and it made a mark, you just go to put you've got your you've put it in a rubbish bag, soften it up and take a bit off the top and fill it up with that, and then you fill it up with your glut. Because it runs a as I say, it runs a risk. When it gets painted, it can soften up and come out. And then the paint that's already full it. Now I'm coming down this back corner. Let's chase this water. Now this time all I'm doing is chasing this water line. Down and off. Bring this area up the way if you want, or you just bring your trail right over it. Um, what you do, you can see the difference. You know, the last time you felt it, it was a bit rough. Take your hands over it this time, it should be a bit smoother. Then the next again polish, it should be almost like glass. So now we're just basically doing it another 10, five, 10 minutes and then get one last, get another polish. Action. Now last polish, just a wee bit warm, don't need a lot.
it's just your area. If you're only doing a wee bit, you've still got two hours to do it properly. Yeah. Two hours a walk. You're, you're roughly two hours. Mm -hmm. Now it depends, if, this, if this was colder here, that could have taken about three, four hours. I've seen me in a, like an old cottage. There's, it's freezing cold inside, but it's warmer outside. And you can't eat um, heaters of that in you yeah, can you can put like a wee heater to take, take the chill out the, chill the, chill out the place, yeah. but you're not wanting anything no, to, want to dry it too quick. See don't want plastic, it. Was that bed cracking that we do that? Aye, ah, it would shrink and crack. See? Nice and neat. Yeah, that's it. You could run a wee brush, wee quarter inch brush round or something like that. Just any marks you would get rid of it. With that, and that's you. All finished. All done.